أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على شوف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I want to thank you for for this invitation uh, the organization around this project and the last prophet uh, info and promoting a better understanding of uh, uh, not only the the prophet peace be upon him والسلام, but also the message and what I'm trying to do with you today is in one hour in fact doing exactly the opposite of what you were thinking I was going to do so it's not to talk about the way we have to talk about the prophet to them to the world but the way we have to talk about the prophet Isaiah to ourselves in order to be understood by everybody and this is my take I think that when we speak about the prophet Isaiah instead of making it oh we have to uh, attract the people to make it understandable and to please the people Islam and the Prophet Islam doesn't need a PR exercise they don't need publicity they need us to understand the message to understand who he was and to try to to follow him because this is what the Quran is telling us about him so he is the best model that you have to follow and why are you following the Prophet first why are we trying to follow the Prophet because this is a, a, a relationship that we has with God first not only with the Prophet so there is something which is beyond him so say if you are loving God so the relationship is about your relationship with God with him with the one التوحيد الأصلي so if you are with him follow me and you the way you follow the Prophet it's going to be the ultimate uh, and final result that you want is to be loved by him so it's not a PR exercise on uh, uh, only strategy to make them understand who is the Prophet it's for us a love story it's for us a love story and the love story it's not only coming from our mind it's coming from our heart the way we deal with the Prophet the way we have to understand his life and then the way you are going to translate this and you know something when you understand somebody with your mind the way you are going to talk about him is going to come out of your mind the way you love somebody, the way you are talking to talk about, the way you are going to talk about him, it's going to come out of your heart. And the world doesn't need people talking about the Prophet ﷺ only with facts and minds. It's about spirituality and meaning. And I think that before being a communication exercise is for us a spiritual exercise to come to the Prophet ﷺ to understand what should be uh, uh, understood second point that uh, I wanted to make it's it's critical because in fact talking about the Prophet and for ourselves coming back to his life in fact is the true introduction to Islam if you want to introduce people to Islam don't tell them read the Quran it could happen for some we have some their spiritual experience uh, came out of the Quran they heard the Quran and this was the revealing factor it happens but when it comes to understand Islam, when it comes to understand what is the Islamic message, the best introduction to Islam is the Prophet ﷺ and his life. For many reasons. First, because as uh, Aisha radiallahu anha said, كان خلقه القرآن, that he was the embodiment, the personalization of the Islamic principles and character and good manners. So he was the Quran, the living Quran. So this is why you look at his life and then from his life you have the chronology you understand the chronology in the quran you start with surat al-baqarah which was revealed 13 years after the beginning so you don't have the chronology it's very difficult to get the quran and the very deep understanding and very often we ourselves we are very capitalistic with the quran we learn the last uh, chapters of the quran saying oh it's very short so we pray with the last uh, surah, surah of the Quran 
But in fact, the last were very deep in meaning. In fact, in these few verses, this is where Allah SWT took the heart of the Prophet ﷺ and converted him with the very short verses, very short chapters that we now are reading very quickly. Because we think that it's very quick and we forget the, the in-depth of the message here that converted the Prophet ﷺ and his heart in the way he was looking at the world. So this introduction to Islam is also for us. The way you are going to understand the Prophet ﷺ is the way you are going to understand the message of Islam and the way you are going to translate this. But before translating it to others, it's the way you are going to understand it for yourself, as I said. And there is something which is important that uh, the Prophet ﷺ said from the beginning as an introduction to Islam. If we come to the Prophet ﷺ for ourselves and from the others, for all the people who are uh, uh, people of other faith or with no faith, are we coming with a message through the Prophet ﷺ that is completely new? When you hear in the Quran, Qul, ma kuntu min rusul say, I'm not an innovator. I'm not coming with something new. In fact, I'm confirming the essence of what was before me. Meaning that, in fact, if we don't know the essence of our message and we speak about Islam as something which is completely new for the people, we don't get it. In fact, there is something in this message that is universal, was before the Prophet ﷺ and will remain until the last day. So how do you get this universal, this dimension that was, and where he is saying, I'm not innovating. I'm just coming to say what was said before me, what came before me. I'm just confirming. Confirming what? Values? Yes, he said it. Values, he said it by saying, I was sent by to uh, complete the good characters, meaning the values and the suluk, meaning the attitudes and the good behavior. So anything which is in the Quran and coming from the Prophet ﷺ, that have to do with good manners, values, principles. He came to confirm this, meaning there were things before me, values before me that I'm just confirming, nothing new. But there is also something else that we have in the Quran. So this is the universal shared values that we have. And we today, if we don't know how to come back to these values and to translate our values into universal values, it's not because the Quran and the Prophet ﷺ didn't teach us this. It's we don't know how to translate this. That's our mistakes. This is, these are our shortcomings and not coming from the message. But not only this. So this is what we have when we look at the world, the overall uh, shared values that we have. Is this the only universal that we are sharing? Listen. Fitrat Allah allati fatara nasa alayha. So Allah SWT created us in a, a, a natural state, in natural aspiration towards the transcendence. In fact, what Mirsi al Eliad, who was a historian on religions, he said, wherever I went, I saw the people looking for an answer. That's it. And many of the scholars, ulama, and one of them, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, when he was talking about the fitra, you see this also in Ibn Ashur, was saying, is this natural yearning towards transcendence? For us, is it tawheed? But everywhere is, I need an answer. Who did that? Who was looking for an answer? The Prophet, salam, and he started, he was, he was 35 years old. He was looking for, he was not happy with what they were worshipping, and he was looking for an answer. And the universal here is an intimate universal. When you speak about universal, be very careful with philosophers. By the way, philosophy is good. It's halal. Okay, so philosophers that are making things theoretical, values outside. The spiritual, the mystical dimension, the very deep dimension that has to do with heart says to us, there is an intimate universal which is al-fitrah. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Then he took from all the, 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 the loans of all Bani Adam and he made them testify. Am I not your Lord, your educator, the one? And they testified, 
Yes. Meaning what? Beyond Islam as the last religion, there is something in the heart of everybody. And sometimes they don't even know about it. There is this spark looking for an answer. So there is an intimate universal and a collective universal. And then we are in between two universals. And we, when coming back to the Prophet ﷺ, we have to understand this. We have to get this from the very beginning. And I'm saying this why? Because many Muslims, when they want to present Islam to people or to talk about the Prophet ﷺ, they want to please them with ideas, not to talk to them with the in-depth of what is the meaning of the message. In fact, they want nice ideas, but they don't trust the deep message. And the Prophet ﷺ came with a deep message, not good ideas. He was not trying to seduce people. He was trying to remind people. There are things in yourself that you don't know. You ignore yourself. You ignore something within. So it's revealing what is in your heart and revealing what we are all sharing as human beings. So this is where we need to start our inquiry, our journey to try to understand the Prophet ﷺ. So before talking about him to people who don't know him, what do we know about him in order to speak about him? How do we deal with this? And the problem is in all our education, uh, educational institutions or in a terbiya that we have dealing with the Prophet ﷺ, we are translating the, the, the Prophet's life into dates and battles. I say, you need to know this. And at the end, you have to love him. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not going to fall in love with somebody if you only talk about dates and battles. Tell me about him, the essence of his life. So let us come to this. So, so the very deep meaning. I think it's essential here. You know who translated into Danish the book that I wrote on the seer of the Prophet ﷺ? The very same people who, in fact, launched the whole controversy in the Yellen Boston, the, 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 the newspaper. In fact, my answer to them was not to say, you are wrong. He said, I wrote a book. And they said, this is the best answer that we can get. Why? Because you are talking about the essence and you are not talking about the controversies. And sometimes our answer should be, you want to play at the periphery, we invite you at the center. We invite you to the deep understanding of. So they translated this as an answer saying, we are not against the prophet, we uh, are against these people who are completely uh, uh, um, uh, um, eccentric or sometimes violent in the way they react. And this is where we should be at the center of our message and not at the periphery of their provocation. But it means that this is where we have to go. So the, the, there is one thing which is in between very important, that the way we have to understand the deep meaning. The Prophet ﷺ, before becoming the Prophet, before he got the first revelation, was in fact respected by the people around him for universal principle. He was called the Sadiqul Amin, trustworthy and trustful, truthful and trustworthy, meaning that in fact these values that were going to be so important in the future were acknowledged by people who were not Muslims and then they were acknowledging that there is something which is universal here. When you are trustworthy and truthful, it means when you speak, you speak the truth. And when you, have, uh, you are trusted, you protect the trust, which is so essential when you have a mission. When you are talking here about something which is so essential uh, about our understanding that the starting point of the prophet coming with the new message, which was so, not so new but was a reminder, was based on his qualities that were acknowledged by the people. And when we speak about this, when we speak about uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, we need to come to, to, to this dimension, to understand that uh, uh, these values that we are cherishing as Muslims are values that are everywhere. These are universal values within the society. And in fact, he was trusted afterward because he was trusted before. And Allah, Al-Mukhtar, uh, elected him in a way which is 
وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You have a noble character. And this is beyond the fact that you are Muslim, non-Muslims. It's the way you are as a human being. So there is something in humanity. The humanity of this divine message is to celebrate human uh, uh, nobleness and characters. And this is why we also have to come with this. It's not to, to discuss or, or to understand that at the end, uh, we also have to experience this. By the way, when you deal with your people here, people who are Turkish people and secular, or even atheists, or people who are having another religion, how do you deal with them? What is your respect? Are you able to see in them the good behavior? Are you able to look at the people not through the window you are a kafir or you are not a practicing, but able to see the good character? Because if you see this, this is where the journey starts for everybody. And even with yourself, some are saying, you know what, I'm not a practicing Muslim. And for them, practicing Muslim is when I start praying and I start fasting. But what are you when you are trying to be honest? When you are trying to serve the people? When you are trustworthy? When you are truthful? Are you not starting your practice? Is it not the first steps? So I think that we have to be, the way we understand Islam is also by reducing the Prophet with just the rituals and the facts and the dates, we don't understand the in-depth of the message here that in fact, before he got this uh, message, he, wa he had this quality, he was al muhtar because of this. And we also, uh, because get me right, if you understand what I'm saying this uh, now, when you talk to people of other faiths, if you understand this, this is the way you are going to put the values and the principles as something which is your relationship to the Prophet ﷺ. Not by he is our Prophet against you, but he had the same values that we are cherishing, us and you. So you put him at the middle of this human experience, not only the Muslim property. Because you know what? He is not your property. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Not for you. You are just means to celebrate this. So you have to say mercy. You have to show mercy and you have to thank Allah to have sent him to us, but not only to us. Us as means for him to be for humanity. لِلْعَالَمِينَ It's the visible and the invisible. It's not your property. So if you end up making him your property, you don't get the message. You don't understand what we are talking about. And there is a second point here. He had this noble uh, 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 qualities and characters. And there is something which also it's important. The way we understand that, can you imagine? He was living with people who were worshipping idols. And at one point in his life, he was not satisfied. And in fact, what Allah took him from his qualities to al-fitrah looking for what is the truth. And he started isolating himself from the society and looking for the truth. If you understand this, and by the way, any one of us who is not doing this in his life, if you think that because you are a believer, you should not look for the truth, there is a problem because it's an ongoing journey looking for the truth. And even with our idols and contemporary idols. He rejected all these idols saying these are gods. But the idols of today are what? Money, consumerism, even ourselves. Sometimes, and you have to listen to what came to the Prophet ﷺ in Surah Al-Muzammil. وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَهْجُرْهُمْ هَجْرًا جَمِيلًا Look at this. Be patient and, and resist and, and, and to what they are telling you or saying, attacking the way they are attacking you and isolate yourself from them. Exile, a beautiful exile. It's not only that you have to isolate, it's the way you do it. It's, there is an aesthetic of isolation or exile. Make it in a noble way, even in the way, but is it not today when you talk about to yourself, don't you have sometimes to isolate yourself from your own society in the middle of the Turkish majority Muslim society with consumerism, with the way we fast, with the way... This is an experience and you are going to be able to talk about it to anybody if you talk about it to yourselves first. So this fitra, which is this necessity to come back to your heart and you listen to 
When you have to follow the Prophet you have to follow the Prophet to come back to your heart. That the knowledge of God is between you and your heart. So this is what was said to the Prophet come back to your heart. So he isolated himself to get an answer from Jibreel So this is an experience that you need to ponder over to be able to talk about it because it's two, at the same time, very universal in intimate terms. It's coming from the heart. It's, an inter it's something that we need to experience. And when you talk to yourself, I can tell you something. What I'm saying here, I can say it to any gathering. No one is going to tell you, it's strange what you are talking about. Anywhere in the world, say, isolate yourself from consumerism. Isolate yourself from appearance. Isolate yourself from worshipping money, from wor worshipping power. That's the starting point of him, isolating himself and trying to get truth versus traditions and, and customs and, and uh, uh, polytheism. And polytheism, by the way, is not something of the past. A shirk, a shirk, it's everywhere, and the most dangerous thing is the hidden shirk, as you know, coming from the Prophet ﷺ. He told us this. So when, for example, even when you pray, sometimes you pray because you know that you are seen praying. That's a shirk. So it's so deep that you have to go very far in understanding what is the meaning of sincerity in the way you understand Al-Ihsan and Ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tarafa in lam ta kun tarafa inna hu yarak. That you worship God as if you are seeing Him, because if you don't see Him, He sees you. That's essential. It's and by the way, I'm not saying this as if Allah is looking at all our mistakes. It's the opposite. He is accompanying us to get this sincerity, to try to be with Him alone as we are with the community.